This is your story. Every word, every picture, every sound, every video, they're yours. It can be molded in any way you'd like. Prose, pose, a kiss with a rose. It's yours. When you comment on somebody's post, that comment is yours. When you cry with heartache or joy, those tears are yours. When you laugh so hard that your belly hurts, that welcoming pain is yours. This will be the best storytelling with Puck yet, and that is because it's yours. So, let me tell you a little bit about how it all works. We'll start with the premise. Um, storytelling with Puck um, was first introduced to the world uh, in 2019. Um, the idea behind it um, was to get as many people as possible from all walks of life with all different backgrounds. Um, some people who might be in uh, working in business, some people who aren't working in business at all, um, to share something which matters to them. It can be their own story. It can be something that's happened to you in the past. It can be somebody else's story. It can be a fictional story. It doesn't matter. What we were aiming to do was to connect people with the idea that stories in themselves are powerful. Sometimes what matters as much as the story is how you tell it. Now, I know that we've got some incredible communicators <laughs> um, joining us this year. Um, some people who write, some people who draw, um, some people who are presenters, um, who do live shows. Um, and we also have people who maybe don't see themselves as communicators, people who feel a little bit shy to let themselves be known to the world and to maybe put themselves on video or to put out their, uh, their secret um, writing habits. Um, what I want you to all know is that no matter where you feel like you are with the ability to write a story, every single one of you is able to do so and you're all able to do it well. A story is as simple as a moment in time. It's as simple as thinking about a point of your life that when you close your eyes is vivid in your memory. And to make that story impactful onto others, all you have to do is think about a few minutes that happened before and the result um, of that particular moment. Put that onto a page, no matter how you do it, you will connect with somebody. And that's the whole idea of this week. It's all about connection. It's all about making sure that no matter where you are, which country in the world you're in, whether or not you're in Nepal or Bangladesh, or um, it, you might be in uh, Nigeria, or you might be in uh, the United States or Canada, or somewhere in Europe, it doesn't matter, somewhere in South America, it doesn't matter. Stories connect us all. Stories are what bind us, what bring us together. It's, they are what started um, the world communicating back in the tribal days, back in uh, cave, <laughs> back in, when uh, cavemen and women were, <laughs> were first, uh, were first uh, brought to the world. So it's time for you to tell yours. Now, you may have some questions about the practicalities. <laughs> um, so we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get through them. If you have any specific questions, which I um, don't cover here, um, please put them in the chat and I will answer them uh, as, as, as best as I can for you. So the first question is, when is it? Um, today is just an introductory. This, this is, Zoom call is all we're doing today. Um, but from tomorrow, um, that will be when the uh, event um, officially starts. So that's the 30th of January and it um, continues until February the 6th. Um, in terms of how you can post your story or stories if you decide to post more than one. Uh, there are a few options. So you can post them either on LinkedIn, on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram, or um, on Medium. 
but what I need you to do, and this is really important, is add the storytelling with Puck hashtag, which hopefully you've seen everywhere in the build up to the event. And uh, I'll make sure that I'm adding it again um, to everything going forward. And also make sure you tag Puck Creations. That's the only way that um, me and Cyan, who will be working on this with me, um, will be able to see um, all of your stories come through. So that's really important. Add the hashtag storytelling with Puck and make sure that you tag Puck Creations. Um, now, some of you will have read the blog and you would have seen the FAQ, but I'm going to go through just a few of the questions that we've been asked to give you an idea of what you um, can do. So some people have asked if the stories have to be in words or on paper. Um, no is the simple answer to that. You can write your story down if you like, um, but you can also um, add a video. Um, you can put a photo on. You can um, add an illustration. Um, maybe there's a piece of music which really resonates to you, which doesn't have any lyrics at all. That is also a story. So you can add whatever story you like. Um, it is it, This is yours, as I said at the beginning. Um, I've kind of covered this already, but your story doesn't have to be business related. In fact, over the past two years, most of the stories that we've um, received have not been business related. Um, for those of you who are in business and wondering, well, um, you know, what's the point <laughs> if they're not business related? Um, firstly, you know, there's all the stuff I talked about earlier in terms of the general connection. But from a business point of view, um, being able to show people who you really are and show your your, I guess your personal brand, some people call it, who you are as a, um, as a person is best done through stories. People will relate to you. Um, and once they do that, you'll get people connecting with you on all sorts of different platforms. Um, and suddenly you'll be able to start a relationship with them. And if they need what you offer, then you'll be able to uh, sell that to them. So there is a massive benefit to, uh, to telling even non-business stories. Um, People have asked, can my story be fictional? Um, simple answer, yes, it can. Uh, it can be uh, fiction or non-fiction. Um, the one thing that we do ask is that if you are providing a fictional story, please don't pretend it's non-fiction. Don't talk about people um, and make up stories about real life people and then pretend that it's um, uh, pretend that it's actually a true story. Um, but otherwise, we very much welcome fictional stories. Um, you can also make your stories uh, personal or biographical, um, but you don't have to. Somebody uh, asked, uh, is this a competition? Um, sadly, no, there are no prizes um, other than the reward of all of the connection that I talked about earlier. Um, we don't want to make this a competition. It's, it's about connection. It's not about whose story is best. It's about everyone connecting with each other and, and, and getting to know each other better. So it's not a competition. Um, as I mentioned earlier, your story doesn't have to be your story. It can be um, maybe an excerpt of an old children's book that you read, or it can be a story that somebody told you down the pub that you want to retell in your own way. Um, if you are telling somebody else's story, though, just make sure you give them credit so that you, they, uh, they, they get the, uh, uh, the reward they deserve as well. Um, a really pertinent question um, that uh, somebody asked me recently was, does my story have to have a happy ending? Now, connecting to people through stories isn't about making everybody feel happy. <laughs> um, even when we're thinking about business uh, and we think about how we connect to people, it's not always about making everybody smile instantly and making everybody feel overly positive about everything. So no, your story does not have to have a happy ending. Your story can end however you like it to. What will really help you connect to people though is making sure that there's some kind of emotional attachment. So try and think about how, how are people likely to, um, uh, to connect with this? Are they, are they maybe going to feel sad at the end? Are they going to feel excited? Are they going to feel joyful? Are they going to feel distraught, angry? Some kind of emotional connection will really, really make your story um, resonate on a, on, a, on, on a stronger level, but does it have to have a happy ending? No, it definitely does not. Um, your story can be as short or as long as you want it to be. Um, now, the next point I'm about to make is really, really important. The whole idea of this is to build a community. So please 
yes, share your stories, we're desperate to see them, but also make sure that you follow the storytelling with Puck hashtag and have a look at all of the other stories that are being put on around the different social media platforms that I mentioned earlier. Um, react to them, give them some, um, uh, give them some kind of uh, feedback so that they know that you've seen their stories, comment on them, tell them how you felt about it. Um, this is really important. This is what makes storytelling with Puck work. It doesn't work unless we're all connecting to each other and we're all uh, making sure that everyone knows that everybody else cares about each other's stories this isn't uh you know a platform just to promote yourself and say this is me and i'm the best in the world this is a platform as i've mentioned a billion times to connect so make sure that you follow storytelling with puck and try and try and look look it up um every couple of days as well to see which stories have been posted and and uh, and, and react to them um or, uh, when you can um, in terms of what we'll do with the stories, um, we're going to put them on our various social media sites, so anywhere um, uh, that there is pup creation, so LinkedIn, Twitter, um, Instagram, and Facebook. And um, we will collate them and then we will share them so that um, hopefully they will reach all of our audience. They'll also be put into the LinkedIn event. So those of you who have joined from the LinkedIn event side, um, you'll get to see all of the stories uploaded there as well. So hopefully when I mentioned earlier about uh, taking part in everybody else's stories, that will make it a little bit easier to do because we will share them all in one place. So you don't have to necessarily go and search for them. Um, so uh, with all with all of that in your minds, <laughs> um, hopefully uh, a few of you have already got some stories ready to go that you've uh, that, that you want to post this week. Um, I know that some of you won't have uh, uh, won't have maybe got some of the build up to the event, so you might not have anything ready yet. Um, what I'm going to do um, now is I'm going to um, ask if, if if anyone wants to to join in the conversation. Um, I'm going to um, now give you permission to start your uh, start your videos um, and we can have a bit of a chat um, and you can ask me any questions that you like about the event and I will answer them as best as I can. Um, I know that some people didn't have a lot of time so hopefully that little introduction is giving you what you need. Um, I will add this recording and also a link to the blog describing what, um, what we need to do um, to the event and to the other pages so that you can uh, so that it's easier for you to get involved but if anybody needs to needs to head off i know that some people said they only had 20 minutes or so um then i completely understand that but if people want to hang around and just have a chat get to know each other see who it is that's telling stories for the rest of the week then please unmute yourselves put your videos on if you want to um and uh, and, and we'll have a we'll have maybe a 10 a 10 minute conversation hi stefano Hi Andrew, how are you? I'm very well indeed, very well indeed. Very um, excited and pleased that you're doing this. I think it's a great idea to, to give a, a platform and accumulate stories from lots of different sources. Um, you know, the, there's a concept in the UK called the Listening Project, uh, which is on BBC Radio 4, and it's basically just capturing conversations between two people, and it's wonderful. Um, and I think there's a thing called StoryCorps in the States as well, where the, where a guy started just, you know, allowing people to re record a conversation in a, in a, in a recording booth in a, in a Grand Central Station. Huh. So there, there's, there, there's some precedent, I think, for capturing people's experiences and stories. But I think the way you're doing it is really, really great. Uh, so mm. I, I commend commend what you're doing. Thank you. I appreciate that. And they sound amazing as well. I, I love the ideas of those events. I, I, I've been inspired um, by by those kinds of events that have happened in the past. Uh, National Storytelling Week was actually what um, got us to um, introduce storytelling with Puck in the first place, because mm. National Storytelling Week was very much dedicated to people from the UK. Um, and it was very much about the spoken word and, and, um, and putting yourself on video and actually literally telling the stories to people mm, mm. um i absolutely love the idea um and and it coincides with uh, with, with storytelling with park week mm. um but we wanted to just spread it a little bit further and get it to a wider audience and also allow people who are a bit uncomfortable with putting themselves on video or in front of people to be able to tell their stories in different ways to be able to put a photo up there or put some you know yeah. stuff like i said earlier but that's I'd also like thing. like to, i'd also like to ask you and i see ben's on the call as well i don't want to take too much time but what you, what no, you said about fine. 
what you said about um, capturing a moment in time and then thinking about what led up to the moment and the aftermath, I think is really interesting because when you when you work in the storytelling industry and you're starting to coach people in you know how to tell their stories, how to find stories, and you obviously look at structures like the hero's journey and a simple proposition structure and so forth, I think in some respects they start to feel that what they have to offer might not be good enough. And and there are so in other words, the 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 downside to looking into storytelling as an art, as a skill can sometimes put people off to the extent that they, they don't think that what they've got to offer is is worthy. <laughs> yeah, I, I completely agree with you with the, on, on, on that. And, and it's part of the reason that I explain it in that way is, is because I, I, I used to exp explain it going through their kind of hero's journey and, and doing all of the typical, um, the, t the typical explanations, uh, which are very important to, to, you know, really get a structure to a story and um, to get people to understand um, how to dive deep when they want to, I guess, tell stories for a living and, and tell them more often or maybe tell them um, in, in meetings, etc. But as you say, sometimes it does really scare people and it's not that scary. It really is a lot simpler <laughs> than people think. It really is literally as, as, as we were talking about, it's just, it's just a moment in time. <laughs> it's, it, it, it is as simple as saying, what happened then? What happened a few minutes before? What happened afterwards? And okay, if you tell a story quite as simply as that, it might not be the most entertaining for everyone, but that's where you start and then you build on it and you keep on going from that point forwards. And so, yeah, um, I, I'm, I'm, I completely agree with you on, on, on that for sure. Hi, Ben, by the way. Hi there, yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm here partly just to um, put a voice to the, the name actually, because uh, Stefano, you know, is so sort of uh, effective on LinkedIn and I sort of see your comments, you're very sort of generous with, your uh, contribution so it's, that's partly why i'm here um but i'll i'll um i'll i'll sort of throw my hat in the ring and, and see if i can do something the next week or so because i think um as andrew was saying i, I recognize some of those you know, those projects you're mentioning i mean they're you know they're wonderful things to follow up they sort of be interesting to see what sort of uh, comes out of this they are they are they are but i think this thing about the moment in time and the you know the ordinariness of stories that, that are around us every day it reminds me a little bit that if you have um, a partner or a friend and you you often ring them if you don't live with them or talk to them at the end of the day and you say well how was your day and then you naturally just say oh this funny thing happened in Tesco's when I went shopping or whatever it, we, we naturally do it all the time and then when you sometimes big it up into a right you've got to pitch now you've got to perform you've got to do your story explain your case study then people sort of freeze and get a little bit pressurized and constrained when they actually do this all the time yeah i'm completely again that's a, that's a really good uh, way of explaining um explaining it because i think you're right that people don't realize that they are telling stories literally every single day <laughs> um mm. you 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 Maybe less so these days, uh, as as we're having a bit less interaction with people. <laughs> but uh, on a, on a on a general day to day basis, you know, people even now people getting on Zoom calls and ringing each other up, and you know, that's that's what makes it warming for people. I think is yeah. is the idea that you know that you're going to, especially if you live alone or you only you know you you're with the same people all day long, and then you get to speak to someone who's going to tell you a story about something really mundane. It could be. It could just. Be story about how they were painting earlier on the day yeah just story. <laughs> just to jump onto that yeah just to sort of agree i mean we need stories now more than ever i guess you know it's a way of escaping um solitude or you know we're very very stuck aren't we yeah. um you know and that idea I can't, i'll probably miss mangle this quotation but you know a house without book without books is like a room without windows so you know our stories are a means of um of a view in the world beyond our, our sort of living rooms when we're all obviously stuck where we are at the moment. So, yeah, we need yeah, them more. I don't, know whether you've, I don't know, Ben, whether you've watched The Queen's Gambit. It's one of the most popular I have. We loved it. shows we on, loved on Netflix. It. And it's the, great. The woman who, the woman who <laughs> plays... Uh, who was that? <laughs> My son, we loved it. We watched, we watched it together. We watched Fantastic. it together. Carry on, Andrew. So you'll, you'll, you'll get into chess. So basically, the, the, the woman who plays her mother is actually a, a film director. Um, she's not primarily known as, a, as an actor, I think. She's a film director and she was she was being interviewed recently. She said that storytelling has never been more important really for people's yeah. mental health now 
because we we have time and and it, you know to, to, we're probably watching more TV and movies now than we have done for some time, and it's it's just kind of it's essential. Other other than the fact that I think they can have benefits to help us sort of understand ourselves, the human condition, you know, how we navigate our way through all the trials and tribulations of life. But it, mm. that quote came from her. It's a brilliant quote. I, 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 and uh, um, that story as well, I, I love the I love the background to it. I love the idea that for years and years and years, they've been trying to make that into yeah. a Netflix show. And, um, or well, not a Netflix show, but into a, into a show. Um, and they kept on getting turned down over and over and over again because it wasn't a sexy story. How could chess be cool? Um, you know, that was the that was the kind of the the, the reluctance that people had. Um, but I think that it goes it, that it goes to prove what we've already been talking about, which is that you can have a story about anything. It's more about the way that it's told. And um, the, you know, some people love chess, and so the idea of a story about chess would be the best thing in the world. Quite a lot of people. Are probably quite indifferent to chess if, if we're all honest um, but the way that they told that story has now made it um one of the the highest uh, viewed um shows in i think the history of tv i could be wrong on that and, and and it's not fully because it's about chess um i think i saw david mitchell um, chatting on the Graham norton show uh recently and um <laughs> he said he said i I still don't like chess. I haven't changed my mind, <laughs> but, but I absolutely loved the show um, because he was enthralled by the the emotions, the um, the passion that was within. Um, oh, I've forgotten her name. Anyone? Um, we watched it a month yeah. ago. It's gone. It's got. It's flown out of our. Yeah. Um, anyway. From the main star, <laughs> from the main character, <laughs> the passion that she had. I think that is what everyone connects to. So when you're telling a story and you think, oh, but maybe nobody else cares about this. Yeah. They might not care about the actual subject matter, but what they care is about how you feel and how you make them feel when you're telling the story. Yeah. That's what makes the difference. That's what makes people interested. Hello, Kalo and Garima. Am I pronouncing hey, your name? Hello. Grima, by the way. Hi. Good to see you. Hi. Um, so where, where are you guys geographically then? I'm in the UK. Okay, point, point to that map behind you, Kayla. <laughs> <laughs> I've decided I'm going to do some work on it during lockdown. <laughs> yes, I need to learn more about capitals. And I thought this was a demonstration of the breadth of your network that you wanted to show off behind you then. <laughs> That's not a bad thing. I didn't think of it, but now you said it, Andrew, it's worth <laughs> looking into. <laughs> yeah. This is where I'm not traveling to at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what about you, Gary? Is it Garima? It's Garima. Garima, where are you? Uh, actually, I'm in Nigeria. <laughs> wow, far away. Yes, yeah. <laughs> What's the time for you now, Garima? Sorry? What's, what's the time? What time uh, is it? It's 1.30 in the afternoon. Okay. So it's not, yeah. not too I bad. guess it should be morning in the in America. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. it's interesting because it's 1.30 here where I am in the Netherlands as well. So it's okay. Kind of, <laughs> I, I was expecting a much faster <laughs> time difference if I'm honest. But, oh, fantastic. Mm. Okay. Yeah. okay. Hi, Florentina. Hi everyone. Hi, hi there. Hello, we, we, Hello. We, we, we I'm from India. Oh, okay, fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm from the southern parts of India. Oh, okay. Uh, we're, we're, uh, Kerala area or somewhere else? Uh, Tamil Nadu. Chennai. Oh, okay, Tamil Nadu. Okay, uh, Ch Chennai. Yes. <laughs> You've been here? Yeah, yeah. Um, I literally spent a couple of days in Chennai, but um, but uh, yeah, it was a, it was a, quite a while ago now, over ten years ago. <laughs> I love That's India. Nice. India is. Um, it, it, I, I, I think one day I might uh, might move across some of the other places. <laughs> 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 
Just follow the map. <laughs> That's nice. Just follow the map. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I can, I can, I can literally travel, uh, travel across, across that map, Kayla. <laughs> yes. I did. Um, I did. I had a terrifying um, uh, taxi journey in Delhi a couple of years ago because I did some work <laughs> in New Delhi, and I've never been so scared in my life in a taxi. <laughs> the, the, ta the taxi's driving along from the airport to the hotel and the taxi driver is doing his tourist bit he's saying this is where president obama stayed and this is where such and such stayed and my fingernails are, are, are digging into the the seat at uh, the back of his seat while he's doing his tourist bit and then on the so way you back, are virtually I you are virtually sightseeing <laughs> I felt like i was on the outside of the taxi i was actually in the back of the taxi but my, my fingernails were digging in and then I think I had the same guy on the way back when I'd finished the work and came back to the airport. And he said, um, I, sa I said to him, I don't think I could possibly drive in, uh, in, uh, in, in India. And he says, oh, yes, you can. He said, Mr. Andrew, he said, you can. You only need three things. You need a good horn, good brakes and good luck. <laughs> 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 and, but I think he says that to everybody. That's just a standard line that he says to his uh, to his passengers. You it's a good one. Like that when you drive in yeah, countries like yeah. that, don't you? I once, I once, uh, I was in Pune, Maharashtra. Um, I went to attend one of my cousin's wedding there. So I mean, I'm sure everybody knows when it comes to wedding how much uh stress and you know every time you're being pushed around going here there and um i was from the uh, bridegroom's side so uh they took us to many places the bride's uh, family and they me and my brother my, my father and my mother we were like put into a small you can say a small bus sort of vehicle and the driver was driving so fast and all of us we were like moving <laughs> <laughs> we were so like we were scared that god forbid if the bus like you know <laughs> collapses or something <laughs> and i don't know how they manage you know the, the driver was busy abusing other drivers you know <laughs> I mean, and the whole thing was so fast. My mother was like, let her not have a heart attack. Or <laughs> and the, the, by coincidence, the driver's name was Sachin. So I'm sure you know about Sachin Tendulkar. Tendulkar, yeah, yeah. yes. The cricketer. So she was comparing the driver to Sachin Tendulkar. <laughs> that is, he's fast like the cricketer. <laughs> he's fast between the wickets, running between the wickets. Yeah. yeah oh my god. Exactly. See, anywhere you have spices in the world, that's how people drive. Sorry, guys. <laughs> is that what it is? Is it the spices that it's does the spices. it? Yeah. No it's just way. pouring through, is it, Kayla? Pouring through the fingertips yeah, people... onto the steering wheel. <laughs> yeah. 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 So we were, we were literally like holding on to the doors and the windows of the vehicle. And I was like, I don't want to attend wedding in India anymore. <laughs> <laughs> when, when I was a little girl growing up in the Caribbean, if you're going on a big school trip, you always put a nutmeg under your tongue and it's, it's to help with motion sickness. Wow. Yeah. Oh, really? Is that right? Yeah, because the buses are like that. I've heard yeah. of eating biscuits, so I guess that's a similar idea. That's yeah. yeah. You, you put the the nutmeg. Someone, some adult, always give you a tiny bit of nutmeg. Put it under your tongue, and if you're a very skinny child, uh -huh. they they would use newspaper and stick it <laughs> stick it right where your chest is, just to, to steady you along those rocky roads because you're likely to throw up. That's it. <laughs> Yeah, so it it is definitely the spice. <laughs> <laughs> I've never I've never heard that explained that way before. That's really interesting. Wherever wherever the spicy food or spices, I I do think you know to an extent Jamaicans drive. We kind of create our own rules, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's it's lovely to see you for the first time, Stefano. In yeah, yeah. Like this isn't it yeah I, I i was i was thinking actually i think i, I don't i am um, I, I i don't know um too many of you that well but um but some of you i've uh, I, i've connected with quite a lot on uh, on linkedin so this is this is 
truly wonderful <laughs> as you say to be mm. able to actually uh see your faces hear your voices yeah. uh, you're even better looking than we thought you were Stefan. <laughs> just, just when we saw your name we could picture what what you would look like and then it I do the, result, the results e even better you don't have to stop <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's Andrew, is, is andrew a plant is have you is, is andrew an actor <laughs> you've hired for the, the session or it depends is he any good at it He's fantastic. He's a top guy, yeah. top bloke. <laughs> so my question is, Ben, how do you get that young man next to you so engaged? Mm -hmm. <laughs> he knows everyone. He's so comfortable. He's very cute. He's, he's an actor. He's uh, a plant. <laughs> he's, another, he's another plant. He is. Okay. What's his name? No. Nathan. Nathan. Tell us something about yourself. Share with us. Um, like your YouTube channel. Well, I have um, something. I have a YouTube channel, so I do like a lot of like filmmaking. I really enjoy um filmmaking, like the editing. So I tend to do about like art. I love doing like my painting and stuff like that. So that's kind of what I enjoy doing. That's fantastic. I, I think one of the good things about the lockdown, because obviously we're all stuck at home and we're all a lot of people are homeschooling, but uh, I think. I think Nathan could go um, freelance tomorrow, really, because he's getting so independent. Um, he wasn't invited to this session. I think he's just mm. coming because you, when he, when Andrew or um, um, Stefano mentioned Queen's Gambit, you, yeah, you wanted to come in. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh, really, really, really. So, yeah. so are you going to yeah, join me with some stories then? Yeah. Are you okay? Well, I, <laughs> I'll be giving him ideas. <laughs> Yeah, no, my inspiration. <laughs> we're gonna have to go now because we've got stuff to do and nathan's on a on a call and we've got lunch and things but lovely to meet you all and to sort of put um you know to sort of hear voices and see faces and yes, um, yes. yeah it's always very very good to that to as well so sort of shut away so lovely to hear those stories guys we're gonna uh, we're gonna disappear but lovely to meet you all yeah yeah really you nice to meet you Thanks Thanks again. Again, nathan. Bye -bye. yeah great to bye. hear from nigeria and india in places bye bye, bye, -bye now Oh, Big wave, mate. See you. Bye. That's lovely. Yeah. Um, so I completely understand, guys, by the way, if you haven't got too much time left, I've got another 20 minutes that I can hang around for. But if everybody else has stuff to do, completely understand. It's, uh, it was I'm, I'm going to do my lockdown walk soon. <laughs> it's schedule. It's, it stays in the diary <laughs> because if I don't do that, then I don't get out. <clears throat> do you so, ever get any stories on your walks? Do you ever see anything that you think is a little bit suspicious, maybe, or a little bit funny <laughs> when, you're, when you're doing your lockdown walks? I've never really thought of it, but I tell you what has come out of it. I, I, I walk with a fantastic British woman and we share lots of talks about Jamaican cuisine. And what has happened from this, when we do our walk, we loop around and then we, I always say to her, oh, Karen, maybe we should stop here. So we stop at this Jamaican store and I, I pick up instant cornmeal porridge, scotch bonnet peppers, <clears throat> One thing I do, I always I become my mom. I feel like I'm my mom now. <laughs> I buy three plantains. You, you know what a plantain mm -hmm. looks like? Yeah. I buy three and I always give her one. And I, I always say to her, when it, when it looks a little bit black, that's the time to fry it. When it starts to get that freckly blackened look. Oh, really? really? Yes. I always say to her, if you look at it now, it just looks too good. <laughs> it looks a little bit greenish, yellowish. This isn't, yeah. it, it, it will still have that stain in it. But if you wait until it's black, then fry it and let me know. So we went back to the shop and I said to her, oh, how was it? I said, did you cut them lengthwise or in rings? She said, she cut them in rings. I said, in Jamaica, we cut the plantain in two and then we slice it. And she went home and mixed butter with cinnamon mm -hmm. and fried it in it. Yeah put some blueberries next to it and a dollop of mascarpone cheese. And oh my gosh, revolutionary. <laughs> it it that looks so, heavenly. yes. I didn't know you could doll it up like that. And she has brought something very new to it. Mm. So that's, that's the big thing that comes from our conversations. It's a lot of talks about food, foods of my culture. And, and she said to me, we should do videos together, Kayla. <laughs> <laughs> that's really nice. And yeah. So I I feel like that's the the best thing that has come out of lockdown. Me 
taking time because I would always pass that shop. I didn't pass it. I would always say, I don't have time to go up there because I need to get home. So I never go into this shop, never. And now my daughter eats plantains. She fries it herself. It's, it's become a staple. So it's, it's good to, yeah, find myself having conversations about food again with my mom. And she loves that. Yeah, that's wonderful. I, 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 um, I think that what you're describing there is actually is, is the, the strange um, kind of idea that with social distancing, mm-hmm. um, it's been you know, very, very difficult to be able to connect with people on a physical basis. But in some ways, some connections have become stronger with people because we're actually putting in the time to make sure we're properly talking to people. We're yes. actually, as you say, going on walks and having those conversations about food and yes. um, going to the shop together. Whereas sometimes it would be, uh, let's meet up very quickly. Hello, have a coffee. See you later. Got to go. Got work to do. And mm-hmm. whereas now those conversations, I think we've all realised how important they are. Well, they, yeah, not they everyone. <laughs> I, I, I think I've realised how much more important they are and that. Yeah, yeah. Say, yeah because actually, you know, actually, generally, uh, before the lockdown started. Everyone is so busy with their lives, with their careers. People don't have time. But now that there's a lockdown and people have (laughs) more time to get more personal, you know. And now because of the because of technology, people are having virtual conferences on Zoom, on you know, online, so many things. So I guess that is what is making uh, people more closer that yes. even though physically like as now everyone somebody is from India somebody is from America but still we are having this conversation you yeah. know so it makes us more connected I think it's a, an interesting paradox at the moment that we are not allowed to let strangers into our houses but we're actually letting more strangers than ever into our houses. (laughs) That's that's so true. But in a different way. And I think the other thing, just connecting with what Garima was saying, is that I I think that this um, way of communicating has actually helped to humanise a lot of the business relationships that were previously quite transactional in nature. Because for one thing, we see into people's homes and often their children come into view and, you know, there's yeah. a dog bark. So someone, the, the Amazon <laughs> delivery man comes to the door and we have to apologize and go off. So there's almost like an acceptance of more humanity in, yeah. in those relationships and those conversations now, rather than having to sort of dress to impress and, you know, go into a tense yeah. meeting and all the rest of it. Yeah. It's, we're, I think we're just a bit more, there's more, um, uh, allowance made yeah the, the layers have come off isn't it the yes the, uh, uh hey puck i've not had a perm in a year <laughs> this is this is what i stay with now and and it, you're, you're so right andrew there's this you know this putting on the high heels and or the boots or whatever <laughs> it's <laughs> yeah. can i just tell you something very quickly about hair and um, I, I actually cut my own hair in lockdown. I keep it short. This is a number one, believe it or not. But that, that's very short for me because I just cut it myself now. It's easier that yeah. way. But before I went to India for that, for that gig I told you about, where the taxi driver and stuff, um, I had to get up at five, five o'clock in the morning to get a taxi to the airport. And the taxi was booked for, say, you know, quarter to six. Yeah. And I decided to cut my own hair that same morning just to give it a bit of a go because it was getting a bit out of shape at the top and I've got some clippers at home and I started doing the top of my hair and I felt something was wrong and I'd actually forgotten to put the guard on the clippers to give myself a number two so I gave myself a bald patch just before (laughs) flying to India to to do a corporate training (laughs) I thought well so my choice is I've either got to do a zero everywhere or just sort of walk very tall and hope that nobody sees the top of my head. <laughs> what did you decide in the end? Did you, did you go zero or did you walk no, tall? I couldn't know. I thought that was a bad look for, uh, for a corporate training experience. So I, I just walked high. I just kept, kept my head high like that. That's good. That's good. <laughs> well, I'm going to run, guys. It's been wonderful meeting you, Florentina, Garima, Andrew and Stefano. What an absolute pleasure.
I've, I've been waiting for this day longer than you, isn't it? <laughs> Long, every time I would see Stefano on LinkedIn and I think, yeah, I, I need to book that Zoom call with him. I need to. So I'm really pleased you have put this together because there's so much to share right now and you're giving everyone a voice and I'm, I'm very grateful. Well, thank you very much for coming and uh, for, for joining in with it. And as you say, we've both been saying for a long time that we need to chat. So this is a lovely way to start. Yes, um, yeah. Just for everyone, um, before I'm guessing a few other people might be heading off uh, soon too. Um, we're go I'm going to be um, from Monday uh, trying to do some evening Zoom sessions where I'm incorporating a few of the stories. Um, so I will put them all onto the event. But if uh, if you can. <laughs> Um, if you can make some of those, um, that, that would be brilliant. Um, obviously, there's no obligation to, um, but uh, it's just a way of, uh, again, with those stories, I like to dig a bit deeper sometimes. So when the story comes out, you see this section of it, but I want to then uh, kind of get beyond what, <laughs> what's on the paper, or what's on the video. So um, I'll be trying to do a few of those next week if I can. Okay. Um, I will let you know the dates, etc. Uh, okay, uh, bye, everyone. Bye, Kayla. Bye, bye Kayla. Bye, bye. Um, I think we've had a few other people heading off as well now, so I'll just quickly say bye in the chat. Yep, <laughs> eventually. <laughs> so, um, are you guys all? Have you got a plan for a, for a story or two coming up over over the week? Then have you have you got a kind of a day that you're setting out to 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 let them loose, <laughs> or are they just going to come when they come? Uh, a, I'm actually kind of up. Yeah, got a few lined up, Stefano. And Florentina, you I got some. Written, yes, I hadn't written them for this, but uh, like you said, uh, India's pretty crowded and everything, and I take trains to work, so I have a lot of little stories happening all all over my journey. Uh, of course, it's it's not there during this lockdown, but. Previously, I, I had those written. So yeah. I think I'll, I'll post one of those. Super. You just reminded me, actually, when you talked about uh, trains there, of one of the best journeys of my life from Chennai um, and all the way to, um, to, to New Delhi. So as you know, that's a very, very, very long train journey. Um, and I did it... About three days, I guess. Uh, two, two days. Um, two, two and a half days. Oh. Yeah, two, yeah, two and a half. Yeah, so... Um, I remember feeling extremely nervous <laughs> as, a, as I first got onto the trains. I'd never had a journey that was that long. Um, and uh, I, I got onto the, the sleeper carriage. Um, so a slight level up from having to, 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 you know, just sit on a chair for the whole journey, which I know that some people do. Um, but the, the, the experience I had over those two days um, of meeting new people, of um, the, the warmth of, I, I remember somebody coming onto the train um, and I could, uh, uh, just for a short part of the journey, um, and I could um, see them getting out, it was a, a pickle um, and a bit of, a, a bit of, I'm not sure if it was naan or it might have been a different bread, but it was a just pickle with a bit of bread um, for their family. And I think they just saw my kind of the look out of the corner of my eye. Um, as I was going like salivating <laughs> at, the, at the incredible, the incredible uh, smell and the, the look of the food. Um, and uh, they all moved over towards where I was sitting and um, uh, the whole family and said, oh, come share, come have lunch with me. And they all offered me their lunch and split, um, split up the, uh, the food with me and just chatted with me as best as we could with their very broken English and my non-existent um, <laughs> um, But it was, it was, it, 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 that was just one of the many stories of people doing such generous things. Um, and I know that in, a lot of people in India are, are very, very poor. And obviously there's a mix of people. There are some uh, rich people as well, et cetera. But one thing that I, I found was that Indians are definitely not poor in, um, was uh, in love and generosity and warmth. And I, I've, I, I've, I always say to people, and you know, I, I, I find people from all over the world and I think I've met people from a lot of places and they're all lovely. But when I meet people from India, I always, when I, got, when I was in India, I always just got something extra special. There was just something there where I just always felt a little bit of extra, 
I was extra warmly welcomed, shall we say, um, uh, by, uh, by, by people there. And I, so I absolutely loved it. And when you mentioned the train, when we talk about moments in time, as we were earlier, that was one of those moments instantly triggered as soon as you mentioned train in India. Yeah. Oh, yes, I remember that lovely family offering me their food. So, yeah, it's a yeah, wonderful place, wonderful place. Yeah. Right, I think um, I'm going to head off as well and uh, get ready because I, I do have another meeting coming up. Um, but it has been absolutely wonderful having you all here. Thank you very much for joining the Zoom. This went on for longer than I had originally planned, and that is absolutely perfect. <laughs> I've loved it. <laughs> I've loved sharing all the stories. So thank you, guys. All right. Thanks, Stefano. Thank Thanks for putting it together. Bye -bye. And lo lovely to meet you all. Yes, lovely Bye. to meet you all. And uh, looking forward to seeing all your stories next week. Yeah, have a great weekend, everybody. Cheers, guys. Bye-bye.